Yo, uh, this is my first time doing a video vlog. That's what we're doing here. I am in St. George, Utah, getting ready to do a speaking engagement at a high school and a middle school, doing a little tour. Then I'm going to uh, Salt Lake City uh, to speak at a couple schools. But um, I want y'all to, you know, follow me around, see how it is to be a speaker and travel around, uh, impacting people's lives, doing what you love. And uh, it's just a, a beautiful, experience uh, to one to be able to travel and to see these beautiful sights i don't know if y'all can see these mountains behind me but um it's pretty dope this is this is the actual airport and uh, i'm gonna go around a little bit to see like some of the sights today and uh yeah so welcome to i don't even know the name but welcome to the vlog pace and side note in case you didn't know i thought it's february it's middle of uh, early February, and I thought it was gonna be cold, so I bought my big coat. But um, it feels like it's about 65 degrees out here. So if ever if ever you guys are coming to Utah and you're going up into the desert, just realize it is a desert for a reason, and it's not gonna be cold like that. So, uh, side note. All right, y'all. So I just had to show y'all this little view real quick. Um, again, we in Utah, St. George, Utah, and I've never seen a, a more beautiful um, paradise uh, to an innocent. And, and this, this is just a little resort they got over here. But if you look in the mountains in the back, I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's a beautiful sight, man. I'm from Virginia Beach, the city. I call us a city boy, right? I never experienced anything like this, so it, it's pretty dope to to be able to take a moment because I'm always on the go ride and just going to airport to airport or to the event to the event so it's really cool that I get to take a little moment today to just take in the, the beauty, beautifulness of, of God the beauty of God um, and just his creation you know I think sometimes we take for granted the city that we're in uh, because we've just been accustomed to it but uh, man just going outside of, of where I'm from Man, it allows me to see that there's so much more. Anyway, let's go to the next trip. Okay, in case you wanted to see what Sand Hollow Park looked like, that's the park right here. Uh, it is a natural park. A lot of families, they bring their boats out on this thing, apparently. And, I mean, it's, it's definitely a sight to see, man. Uh, this is a vacation spot. I gotta bring my wife. I gotta bring my friends. I love it here. Um, I think Utah is like this all around, especially in the, uh, the desert areas. So, yeah, beautiful. All right, so I am at the Red Fort Cuisine, and we're about to eat this good old food over here. Got the rice, the non bread, and some of the sauce. It's about to go down. Yo, that food was fire. I gotta go to the bathroom now. All right, y'all, so I've been um, rehearsing for about an hour now, going over my speech for tomorrow. And I think a lot of times people don't understand like the work that goes in behind the scenes. Like maybe people think like you just show up on the stage and you just speak from the heart. Real speaking and impact happens behind the scenes. And I think for aspiring speakers out there, the thing that I would really tell you guys is that, yes, you have a, a message, yes, you have a story, but the transformation happens in the preparation. What do you do behind the scenes? How are you preparing? Like, you know, doing the little things. I remember when I first got into speaking, I never forget the time that I realized that this is something that I cannot take lightly. I was speaking at my alma mater, it was um, based out of high school. And at the end of the event, kids wanted to take some photos with me. Students wanted to take some photos with me. And this one teenager came up to me, tears down her face. And she says, listen, man, I need to let you know what you said on that stage. That changed my life. I felt like killing myself today. But you make me want to live my dream. And the weight of what she said to me and, and what I was going through in my life at that time. Like I was, I was someone who had a devastating injury. I moved back at home, my mom trying to figure out my life. And she tells me all of this and I didn't show up in the capacity that I should have, but it still left an impact. It made me say to myself, this, what I have to say, it truly matters. What you have to say, your story, it truly matters. 
but to create real impact, to create lasting change, to, to create generational curses that are broken, to create a, a, a whole different mindset for, for people that you come a, across in the stages that you speak on, it's gonna take a lot of preparation. The moment that happened for me, like, it was like, yo, you, you, gotta, you gotta go the extra mile. Every little part, you gotta go the extra mile. So I, this is a part of my routine. Everything that I do, I rehearse. Even though I might know the speech, uh, it's something that I might be doing because it's a, a popular speech that companies or schools they want me to speak on. I, I, I gotta rehearse, but because I know, like, there's that, that's that one person out there at any moment. There's that one person out there who needed that message. And if I showed up just average. What kind of legacy am I living? I, t I take it. I take it really, really seriously. Like I'm in the hotel room, and I, you know, I got my waters, and I'm going through the the different parts of that that speech that's going to create that 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 impact or that laughter. Um, I'm thinking about all of it. It's kind of like you know. I think the person that I'm, I model um, or I, I look up to in in that sense of delivery is Will Smith, man. Like his preparation and the thing that he that he he does behind the scenes to create the movie, it's like I, I gotta at least tap that. If I am not if I'm not doing this, like don't call this a job. Don't don't do that because you're disrespecting people who put in hard work. The craft is serious, and there's a lot of things that I that I I take to heart, like. You know, even talking with my clients, making sure that they're comfortable, confident with the message, like a lot of behind the scenes stuff that goes on that nobody pays attention to. And they wonder like, wow, how did he pull that off? It's because of the preparation. So I, I just say like preparation uh, is, is really the, the secret to longevity and creating real impact and legacy. I don't know if you're an aspiring speaker out there or you know, you're watching this video because it's cool. Like whatever it is that you do, do it seriously. Do the preparational work. Invest into your craft. Practice, not because practice makes perfect, uh, but practice makes improvement. And the only way we can make improvement if if we're aware of the things that we struggle with and the things that need to be improved. You know, this is behind the scenes. Uh, this is my vlog. I'm, I'm trying to figure this thing on out, but um, this is behind the scenes, y'all. Hey, uh, good morning. Just getting up. It's uh, about 5:30 here. I like to start my morning off by reading the word. Today's word is coming from Isaiah 25, 1. And it says that, O Lord, I will honor and praise your name for you are my God. You do such wonderful things. You planned them long ago and now you have accomplished them. And just like, you know, when, I, when I'm looking at this, Isaiah is is reflecting on the the goodness of God and just his his faithfulness in, in what he said he was going to do. He did it. And it, it just makes me think about many situations in my life where I felt like, yo, I don't know if, if God's still in this after, you know, I had an injury and God, where am I, you know, what, what are my plans? You know, where is the, the promises that you have for me? And just looking at this and Isaiah is, is just praising God. He's thanking God. He's, this is a, as a part of his, um, his praise for, for judgment and salvation. Uh, that's what the the subtitle of this this passage is saying it says, "Oh Lord, I will honor and praise Your name, for You are my God. You do such marvelous things. Excuse me, You do such wonderful things. You planned them long ago, and now You have accomplished them." And I'm just so encouraged right now uh, that that God has not done with me yet. God is not done with you yet, uh, and He's still doing great things. And I think like what. This also just um, reminds me of as well is like this past two weeks has been um, really crazy. Some unexpected blessings coming my way. Like uh, I was with a client and we were having a, a pre-event phone call. It was uh, with a, a really big client and I ended up talking about my, my speaker fee. They asked me what my speaker fee was and the lady was looked at me real strange after I, uh, I said what my speaker fee was. Like she was disgusted with it, and I'm like, yo, why? Why is she looking like that? And and she paused, and she was going on for about five minutes at this point. She was like, mm 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 mm, that's too low. Your price is too low. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, yo, my, my price too low? She was like, you know, with with all that you got going on your website, your videos, 
your what your reviews your price is too low and i said i said to her i said oh man if my price is too low what do you think it should be at this point i'm just being real like let i'm, I'm not worried about this deal right now what what do you think it should be because apparently i'm not getting what i i, I deserve right now and she said at least double at least double um and i and i took from that what she said i said all right i'm gonna do it inflation going up i'm about to double my price a day goes by another client comes in and they ask me what my speaker fee was. Matter of fact, they didn't even ask me what my speaker fee was. They said, Charles, we're going to work with you. Send us the invoice. Send us the invoice of the new, my new speaker, uh, my new speaker fee. And they signed a contract and I got double. And, you know, it just brings me back to the Isaiah passage, Isaiah 25, 1. Oh, Lord, I will honor and praise your name for you are my God. You do such marvelous things. You planned them long ago. And now you have accomplished them. You know, I wonder if we just think about for a moment uh, the plans God has for us and not just the plans that we have for ourselves. What what can we then accomplish? And I'm just so encouraged by this. Um, God is, is working in your life. He's working in my life. And we got to trust that plan. Lean into that plan. Lean into his vision, not just the way we see things, our, our conventional thinking. Um, so uh, today I'm getting ready to to just do some more preparational things, getting ready to do my workout and uh, my aura ring. I'm about to check out my, my status of my aura ring, see how well I slept. Sleep is so important. Got an 85, 87 optimal score. So that's really good. That, that's probably one of my highest of the year. So now, yeah, I'm about to go work out. First brush my teeth, you know, take care of myself. Get my hair looking right because I look a little hot mess right now. But uh, this is behind the scenes, yo, so I hope y'all enjoy this. <laughs> All right, so I'm headed to the gym right now. Yeah, I'm ready to superset this. So I, I normally read in the morning. Well, I do read in the morning for 20 minutes. And um, I'm gonna do the workout and read at the same time today. Get a morning routine. If you don't have a morning routine, it's so crucial. I'll probably do a, another vlog on this about morning routine and how they really just prep you for success for the day. Get you at a state of peak state performance. Yeah, get ready to do this workout real quick. Yeah, I love it when the gym is by myself. So I'm gonna go on this uh, elliptical. Elliptical. Such a funny word. Elliptical. Yeah, that'll be it. Then head to get some breakfast. Get my day going. Yo, what's up? I made it to Salt Lake City and it's been a crazy week so far, but I'm, I'm glad I'm here. Um, yesterday I did a couple of speeches with those schools and um, you kind of heard the story on that. But I think what's next today is Saturday and it's the day before the Super Bowl. I won't be with my family and friends, uh, but I guess I'll be chilling out here, getting some things done, preparing for the next week, and then just hanging out on Sunday. Yo, what's up? It is Monday, February the 14th, Happy Valentine's Day. And I'm getting ready to do my speech at a school, and um, it's getting ready to go down. So I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I am going to be doing a leadership session, then I'll be speaking to the entire school. Uh, doing two sessions with the school. So it's going to be a dope experience. Y'all stay tuned. Go on this journey with me. Uh, it's time to rise and thrive. Welcome to my vlog. Hey, so it looks like I just arrived to the school. think I'm at the right one. And I don't know if y'all can see this, but this school is right behind mountains. That's pretty cool. How are you going to have a campus like that that dope? I'm going to head on in and do the first session. What school we at? Come on, you gotta say it like you represent it. <laughs> For her middle school. <laughs> Alright, so uh, this is the stage crew? Yeah. Yeah, y'all gonna help out, you know, get, get everybody in here nice and tight. Yep. You know, do a little, little shout out. Where y'all from? Oh, Harriman, Utah. Harriman, Utah? Yeah, Harriman, Utah. Harriman? Harriman. Harriman, okay. Harriman, I'm, I'm from Virginia Beach, uh, but I, I reside in Tampa, Florida right now. Hello. So, yeah, it's gonna be fun, man. Yeah, so, it's gonna be looking fun. Looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, so students are coming in right now, and um, 
Get ready to have a good time, y'all. So stay tuned. Yeah. Peace. That was epic, and we're getting ready to do it again. So uh, that was part one, and, and now we're getting ready to bring in the next assembly. Um, and yo, stay tuned. This is crazy. to get to the gate. I got like five minutes to get to the gate. So I headed to Houston. Then Houston be in Tampa later on tonight. Yo, I'm back on the road again, back in Denver. And uh, getting ready to speak at this college. Uh, Denver has a huge airport. Uh, there's not a lot of people in there today, but it's snowing outside, uh, or it did snow outside. So I'm gonna be taking that Uber. I don't like to drive in the snow, hence why I live in Florida, and I like it hot. But anyway, this is my first time taking a train in Denver. I'm kind of excited about it, but I don't know what to expect, and I'm gonna try to figure this thing on out by myself. out y'all I'll keep you posted okay so I just figured out how to use the train station uh, well this is the, not the train station I think I did it first time on the train all right y'all I think I gotta catch a bus to get to where I need to go but it's a beautiful city so I think I just found the mall right I don't know how you pay for it, but this is it. <laughs> Just in time. And it's free. Alright y'all, so I'm on the bus right now. And I'm almost there. I got a couple more stops to get to where I need to get to. I found it. Found the hotel. What a freaking journey. You know, if this didn't teach me something. I don't know what will. I think the whole thing about traveling is that, yeah, sometimes you just don't know where you're going. And maybe this is like life too. You don't know where you're going, but the fact that you're showing up and you're trying to figure out ways to get to the destination, you end up finding it somehow. Running through the snow. Ugh. So unfortunately, uh, I have been waiting for my room to get ready for the past, I would say about three, four hours now. I'm getting a little impatient. I just wanted to go in my room and take a shower. And I'm not able to do that. So I heard they got some Cinnabons though, down the street. So I might go ahead and grab me a Cinnabon real quick. I've been craving, I've been craving a Cinnabon for about two months now. And I think I deserve it. <laughs> you ever say that to yourself like, yo, I just des I deserve something. Knowing goodness well, it ain't nothing, it ain't nothing about about de being deserving of something. You just want it, okay? You just say you want the Cinnabon. I want the Cinnabon, okay? So I'ma eat the Cinnabon. I'm gonna eat the Cinnabon right now. Alright, so I finally got my room. Get ready to find that now. I still wanna get those Cinnabons. Ah, oh, I just wanna take a shower, relax for a moment. But this is how it is though. Ooh, they hooked me up though. 
definitely appreciate the king suite. Little hotel. Got my little living room area. Bedroom. Bathroom. Nice little bathroom in there too. I smell real nice in here. So it was worth the wait for sure. But I'm gonna get that center bun. I'll keep y'all posted on how delicious this meal about to be. They put me on the top, top floor. So, it's a little Denver. They call it the Mile High Club. You definitely feel it. Altitude is a, is a, uh, is a thing here for sure. And you definitely gonna need the chapstick. As I learned from Utah, my lips were so ashy, but, um, yeah, I'm going I'm to take a, take a look at them Cinnabons. Oh, shout. Anyway, guys, uh, I'll keep posted. It's been 10 minutes now. It's time to get the Cinnabon. Well, I guess I got to come back. The Cinnabon's not ready. I know y'all ready for me to eat this Cinnabon. I'm just gonna go back into that store. I just wanted to and eat this burger I bought. <laughs> Veggie burger. Dang, boy. Talk about anticipation. <laughs> it's third time, the charmer. We shall see. I'm trying to get this Cinnabon, y'all. So, been killing time just for a Cinnabon. I'm glad I don't do drugs. Open it. Open it yeah. Open this? it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to show the goods. Ooh, wee. It's going down. <laughs> All right, in all seriousness, I'm going to take a shower, and then I'm going to eat this Cinnabon. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready to eat my Cinnabon. And... The only thing I wish I had with this right now, y'all already know what I'm gonna say. I ain't gonna say milk, I'm gonna say almond milk because just look at that. It's, it's gonna need some milk for that right there. Once you get to the center of that center bun right there, you know you taste in heaven right there. So a little milk, almond milk, just set that thing off right. But I know y'all, I know y'all wanna, I know, know y'all wanna be a part of this right here. So, but what part do you supposed to eat first? Do you eat the outside or do you just go in for the good stuff, the inside? Now, it, I think it depends on the type of mood you in, how hungry you are, how long you've been craving this. For me, you know that I know the inside is the best side. I think I'm just gonna go in for the middle. I'm going right for the middle. Do you grab a big piece, little piece? I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna go right in for the middle. Mm. Now I ain't gonna be able to eat this whole thing now. I could take a couple bites. 